everyone. I hope everything's going well. Uh, today we're going to talk about connecting the position function, the velocity function, the accelerated functions with integrals. And so I'm going to do a little bit of review. Let's say we have a position function that we call s of t, and I'm going to write that it's the position function. It tells us where something is at any time t. And if I take its derivative, it gives me v of t, which is the velocity function. And if I take its second derivative, which is the derivative of the velocity function, it gives me the acceleration function. And well, I'm going to abbreviate that because I'm a person that just needs room. Oh, and we're going to call it A of T. Sorry about that. So this is that. Now, if we're going backwards and I take the integral of the acceleration function, I'm going to get the velocity function plus some constant. And if I integrate the velocity function, I'm going to get uh, the position function plus some constant. Okay, so what we're doing is we're really working backwards. That's what we're doing. I'm going to back this off my volume just a tad little loud. All right, a particle moves along the x-axis with an acceleration of 12t minus 4. The particle's velocity is 18 centimeters per second at t equals 2. The initial position of the particle is 8 centimeters. What function, what is the function x of t that represents the position of the function? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate, and this is, by the way, I'm going to give you a little note here. This would be an example of a no calculator problem I may give you when I see on the AP exam. And so I'm going to integrate, um, and I'm going to just do an indefinite integral of 12t minus 4 dt. That's the acceleration function. And when I do that, I'm going to get Remember the power rule. Here's a 1. I'm going to add 1, get 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I'm going to get 6t squared minus 4t plus some constant. So that's the general form of the velocity function. 6t squared minus 4t plus c. But it tells me my velocity is 18 centimeters per second at time equals 2. So I'm going to have 18 here, and I'm going to put 6 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus c. So I substituted 2 in for c. v of 2 is 18, and now I'm going to solve for c. So I get 18 equals 24 minus 8 plus c, and I get 18 equals 16 plus c, so 2 equals c. So now my velocity function, I know what it is exactly. It is 6t squared minus 4t plus 2. Now if I integrate that, that's going to give me s of t. Uh, what do I want here? Does it say this? Yeah, s of t. I think we're okay. Oh, it says x of t right there. I better say x of t. x of t right here. It says that. x of t is going to equal the integral of 6t squared minus 4t plus 2dt. So when I integrate that, I'm going to get this general form of, I'm going to add one here. This is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2 t cubed minus, this is going to be t squared. I'm going to take the 4 divided by 2 and get 2. And I can check my derivatives to see if I get that back. Plus 2t plus c. Now it tells me that the initial position, the initial position means that t equals 0. So I'm going to put 0 in for t, and I know the initial position is 8. And so I'm going to get a 0 here, because 0 cubed 
right, times 2 is 0. I'm going to get a 0 here. I'm going to get a 0 here. And I'll be left with C. C is always your initial position. So I could have skipped this right away and said C was equal to 8. So my position function is equal to 2t cubed minus 2t squared plus a lot of 2s, 2t plus 8. OK, that gives me my position function. All right, the next problem. Mr. Bruss is driving across town to Mrs. Sullivan's house to play with a new set of Star Wars figures. Mr. Bruss's speed would obviously vary throughout the drive, but because he is so cool, he came up with a function that represents his velocity miles per minute at any time t since he left his house during the 30-minute drive. Well, he takes off, and if you notice... He's going the opposite direction of where he should go in. So this is the wrong direction. And then he turns around and starts heading in the right direction. So this is the right direction. And then gets lost again, excuse me, gets lost again for a while, drives in the wrong direction, then turns around again and drives in the right direction. Okay? And again, this is a calculator problem. So I'm going to show you how do you write it to get your uh, points. So you have to be able to integrate on your calculator. And it says right here, v of t equals this. And since they told me what v of t, I'm going to put this into y1, but I'm not going to write this out. So it says, how far is Mr. Bruss from his house after the first 10 minutes? So I'm going to say from 0 to 10, v of t dt. And if you notice, these right here say the increments. It's scaled by 5. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, and when I did that on my calculator, I got approximately 3.01. Now, this is a velocity, and it tells you miles per minute. And these are minutes. So the area underneath that would be miles. So he is now three miles from home, approximately. He went in the wrong direction, turned around, came back. Okay, so at 10, he's heading in the right direction. How far is Mr. Bruss from home after 15 minutes? Well, it's going to look like the same thing from 0 to 15. Now, notice he turned around got lost again v of t dt. Again, I would. this is already in my calculator. And so this would be approximately 3.397 miles. All right. It says, if Mr. Bruss arrives at Mr. Sullivan's home, how far does he live? Well, to get that, I'm going to have to integrate from 0 to 30. V of t dt, and on my calculator, that would give me 22.824 miles. Okay? So, the last one is, how many miles did Mr. Bruss drive? Well, even when he was going in the wrong direction, these were miles, and these were miles, and these were miles, and these were miles. So what I want to do is make these positive because they're miles. Even though they're walking in the wrong direction, even though they're in the wrong direction, they're miles. So I'm going to write this from 0 to 30 of the absolute value of t dt. Oops, I forgot my... Okay, now, you're going to have to find your absolute value function. Uh, on a TI, it's math. It's under your math portion. And if you look on a Casio, I believe it's in your option um, 
function. And so you can put that in there. Again, you would probably, when you put that in your calculator, uh, you're going to find your integral, you're going to figure out your absolute, and you will put your y1 into there. And when you do that, he drove a total of 28.497 miles because he got lost. So it includes these miles that were right here. All right. A couple of things. When you integrate velocity, you'll always get displacement. When you integrate the absolute value of velocity, or what I would say integrate speed, you get total distance. Don't get this confused with velocity because this is simply the absolute value of velocity is speed. It's not distance at all. It's just speed. All right, let's see if we have anything else. Yes, we do. I'm going to flip this over and look at these two particular things. It says a part of particle's velocity is given by uh, 4t cubed minus 6t squared plus 1. The function x of t represents the position of the particle along the x-axis. Find the position of the particle uh, after 3 seconds. So there's a couple ways to do this. And you've seen this before. I can say 5, because that's when I start initially at 0, it's 5. Plus integrate from 0 to 3 of 4t cubed minus 6t squared plus 1dt. And this is going to be a no calc problem. And to do that, I'm going to have 5 plus. I'm going to figure out the antiderivative of that. This is t, t to the fourth, excuse me, minus 2t cubed plus t evaluated from 0 to 3. That's how I write that. And then that's going to give me 5 plus. Now, inside here, I'm going to put in 3, and I'm going to get 81 minus 27 times 2 is 54 plus 3 minus, if I put 0 in there, I get 0. So if I figure this out, 81 minus 54 is 27. 27 plus 3 is 30. I'm at 35. Now, I would have gotten 35 if I would have figured out the antiderivative because x of t is equal to, again, t to the fourth minus um, 2t cubed plus t plus c. And then I could have figured out c by putting 0 in for t. And uh, x of 0 would be 5. And so c would be 5. So the particular solution would be x of t equals t of the fourth minus 2t cubed plus t plus 5. And then I could have put in x of 3 and got 81 minus 54 plus 3 plus 5, and I would have gotten uh, 35 on that also. Okay, So either one of those would be accepted. Uh, find the position of the function at 2 seconds if x of 1 equals a negative 2. So I would say negative 2 because that's my starting y value. Plus, now I integrate from 1, because that's my starting, after 2 seconds. And so I'm going to, this is 1 second, so 2 seconds. I can put 2 up there. Again, I'm going to put this function in there 4t cubed minus 6t squared plus 1 dt. And so I have a negative 2 plus, use this bracket, I'm going to put. Oops, I forgot to say, well, I know the antiderivative. The antiderivative is a negative 2 plus uh, t to the fourth minus 3t, excuse me, 2t cubed plus t 
evaluated from 1 to 2. Okay, so I get negative 2. When I put 2 into here, I will get 16 minus, when I put 2 into here, I get 16. Ooh, I'm happy to see that. Plus 2 minus what I get when I put 1 in there, and I'll get 1 minus 2 plus 1. I'm happy to see that. So I get negative 2 plus 2 minus 0, and I get 0. Very good. Alrighty. Now again, this is a no calculator one. So in this case, uh, notice it says I want total distance. So total distance is going to be the absolute value. And how do the absolute value if you can't use a calculator? Okay, so what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to find out, if you notice, this hits, at, the, hits the intersection at 2. So I'm going to integrate, and this right here, all my y values are positive. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2, a negative 1.5t plus 3dt. Now, here my y's are negative, so I'm going to multiply this by a negative 1, and it goes from 2 to, I think it says, the first 4 seconds. So I'm going to go from 2 to 4. And since all these y values are negative, I'm going to multiply this by a negative 1 and get 1.5t minus 3dt. What that does, it re puts those up into that part. So it's going to look like, uh, let's see, something like this if I can draw it. I'm kind of a little nervous, like that. So it's going to swing those and I'm figuring out this area here and this area here. And so that's what I'm going to do. And so I'm going to figure out the antiderivative here. It's going to be squared, so I'm going to have a negative 1.5 divided by 2t squared plus 3t evaluated from 0 to 2. Plus, I'm going to have 1.5 over 2t squared minus 3t evaluated from 2 to 4. So what does this look like? Well, if I put a 2 in here, I'm going to get 4. And so I'm going to have a negative 1.5 over 2 times 4 plus 6. And if I put 0 in there, I get 0, minus 0. So there's one value. Plus, now when I put this in here, I'm going to put 4 in here. I'm going to have 16. So I'm going to have 1.5 over 2 times 16 minus, when I put 4 in there, I'm going to get 12 put parentheses here, minus. And now when I put 2 in here, I'm going to get 4. So 1.5 over 2 times 4 minus 6. All right, what does this all give me? Well, the t this 2 and this becomes a 2. So I have a negative 3 plus 6, and I get 3 plus 2 goes into 16 8 times. 8 times 1.5 is 12 minus 12, which is 0, minus, when I take uh, 1.5 times 2, that gives me 3 minus 6. So I'm going to have 3 plus 0 minus a negative 3, which is 3 plus 3, and my answer is 6. All right, some problems that deal with position, velocity, and acceleration. Thank you for your time.